Hi, my name is Ron Dorn, and the purpose of this video presentation is ex to explain to you the Stage B Hawaii question number two, dealing with precipitation patterns. So I'll go to screen share, and then organize the presentation via a PowerPoint. Um, the precipitation pattern question is where you go to different spots on the Big Island of Hawaii, and you match that location with the type of precipitation pattern that you can see. Um, Hawaii has fantastic examples of reasons for it being dry and reasons for it being rainy. And I'll, I'll briefly overview your options here. There's the trade winds that approach the island of Hawaii from the east, and in particular the northeast. They rise up the mountain and they cool and clouds form and you get an enhancement of precipitation called orographic rain on the east facing sides of the mountains facing the trade winds. Then when the air descends on the lee side of the volcano, it warms and you get fantastic rain shadows. The best rain shadow is on the Kohala volcano. The trade wind inversion is something that occurs above about 2200 meters. So I have a graphic here showing the general circulation of Earth's atmosphere, where there's a circulation cell that occurs between the equator and the desert, say Phoenix at 34 degrees north. You get trade winds that converge on the equator down at the surface. That would be in this area here. So you get the trade winds that are blowing this way towards the equator. They converge at the equator and they rise up in the intertropical convergence zone. And then the air descends as it moves poleward in the upper atmosphere because there's a geometric constriction of the planet Earth. There's so much volume at the equator and there's less volume as you move towards the poles, so the air is descending. And the air up here in the upper atmosphere is very dry. So you get descending air that creates an inversion where it's really warm, moist air below and it's much drier air above. And this inversion actually reaches the surface at the subtropical high. Then there are things called the sea breeze, uh, or there's a sea breeze diurnal effect that occurs on the Kona coast of Hawaii. So all these things combined result in different patterns shown in the lower left, O being the orographic effect, TWI being the trade wind inversion, R being the rain shadow, and SB being the sea breeze wraparound are different locations on the Big Island of Hawaii that explain the precipitation patterns you see on the lower left. This is what the question looks like in Canvas. You're given four locations, and then you're given these choices that you can see. You can pause the presentation and read these choices that you'll encounter in Canvas. So examples of orographic uplift might be what you'd encounter on the train wind or the east facing part of Mauna Kea or Hoalalai. So the upper left example is the avatar sitting on the slopes of Hoalalai right in the bullseye of the orographic uplift, if, uplift, uplift effect. The air hits the Koala volcano, it rises up and you get a rainfall maximum. The lower right shows a graphic of what's happening. The trade winds encounter the topography, the mountains uplift the air, it cools, condenses, and you get enhanced rain. However, if you look at a satellite overview image of the northernmost volcano or Kohala, you could almost draw a line where you can see the orographic effect of the trade winds on the right, and then a dry line where it's desert on the left or the west facing side. And this is a world-class example of the rain shadow effect air descending on the lee side, warms and it dries, and that gives you the rain shadow effect. The only place to find the sea breeze orographic effect that you can see identified in the upper right with this bullseye of precipitation a little bit away from the coastline in the Kona coast is on the Big Island of Hawaii. It's a world-class example where you'll notice that if you plot out the precipitation by month, there's a summer maximum of precipitation. 
What's happening on the Kona coast, if you look in the lower right diagram, is the trade winds are being blown, pushed around the south point, and they're being pushed through the gap between Mauna Kea and Mauna Loa, and the moist air wraps around the island. Then you get the slopes of the volcano of Hualalai and Mauna Loa heating up. That heating up creates a sea breeze effect. The sea breeze blows up the slope of the volcano and you get orographic lifting and summer rainfall in this area. And this is an in-game shot of what the Kona Coast looks like with the camera pulled way back and the arrow identifies the avatar, both in the game and also in the inset map showing the precipitation. And this strip of precipitation is because of the sea breeze being pulled up the mountain and the orographic effect of cooling and raining air. The trade wind inversion for Hawaii is illustrated by these diagrams from a dissertation on the subject. Notice in the graph that at right around 2200 meters, there's a drastic change in dew point in the graphic on the right. There's much higher dew points below the trade wind inversion, a lot of moist air, and much drier dew points, very drier above the trade wind inversion. And then this diagram on the, on the, oops, sorry, the diagram in the upper left shows the idea that the trade winds are trapped underneath the trade wind inversion and you get very dry air up above. So when you look at it in the game, such as on the slopes of Mauna Kea, the color ramp that I'm using here is the reddish or much higher dew points. And if you look way down towards the coastline, there's very high dew points. But as you move up the slopes of the volcano to above 2200 meters, it's much drier air. That's question two. And I hope that you can easily now match the different precipitation patterns to what you see in the game. Hope you found this useful.